So hi guys, today I'm cleaning up this old vice that I found uh, garbage and it's kind of old classic design it doesn't look like the regular vice vices that you can find it has this um, function I'll show you more detail but it's like it's actually you compress it by hand and then it uh, fastens your your materials or your parts together you can see that there's a bit of color on it and uh, basically that's not very good for electrolysis but I'm just doing this as a show to um, describe what my electrolysis setup looks like for rust removal. I haven't started the process yet, but I'm gonna plug it in now. But first of all, I'll tell you what's in here. This is a sodium chloride solution. It's 27 liters of water, and it contains basically one teaspoon of table salt sodium chloride per liter of water so it's 27 teaspoons of salts in here as well and uh, and since I uh, tend to um, prefer to do the rust removal electrolysis in acidic solutions because acidic solutions have the capability of dissolving the rust into the iron ions I also add one liter of white vinegar and this white vinegar goes in here now. So it's a very, very diluted solution of white vinegar. And the composition of, of this electrolysis medium is uh, so harmless so that you can basically drink it. Not that it will taste very good though. So now I'm going to plug in the wires and we can see what happens. So the wires are now plugged in and if you look carefully you will see the bubble starts forming. But primarily you see the bubbles forming along the wires now. And you can see the wire sitting here and over there is another wire holding the vice up. I keep the vise as close to the surface as possible so I can be able to follow this process and monitor the progress of the rust removal. And I'll change the camera view now so that you can see more properly how the setup looks. So the reaction has now been going for a while and I will take some time to explain how the entire setup looks. You can see the vice is hanging in some wires. Those wires are titanium wires. And uh, you can also see the anode, which is connected to the red side, of the battery charger. That is also made out of titanium foil. The reason why I use titanium in this case is because titanium is completely inert or non-reactive in this acidic medium. It's also used in professional electrolysis. It's easy to clean off. You can just take it out and use some regular detergent and it will be as new. You can also use graphite, but graphite is a little bit more difficult to find. And uh, especially if you want a big surface. Because the bigger your the surface is of your anode, the faster your electrolysis reaction is going to go. The entire wire is hanging now to the negative side of the battery charger and you can see it's just a stainless steel bar that are crossing this high density polyethylene container. High density polyethylene container is excellent in, this, in these applications because it's very easy to clean it. But you can see here the bars are connected to the black side and that's where we're pushing in the electrons from the battery charger and I'm just using a regular battery, char battery charger, the cheap ones, ones that you find on any old, well, second-hand store. Now, some comments about why my anode is placed on the bottom. Well, the reason why the anode is placed on the bottom is because uh, I prefer to have um, the vise on top so I can follow the progress and also all the charged fragments of rust that falls off, they end up on the bottom so the solution stays clear. Uh, it's, I'm not sure that it's visible yet, but the solution is actually now starting to turn green. And that's the ferric ions 
in the iron oxide that is dissolving. If I zoom in now here, you can see what I mean by fragmentation. You can see everything that is falling off. You can see, for example, what's lying down there on the anode. A big piece of rust has fallen off. And that's because the solution, which is acidic, has now been able to penetrate in under the rust into the iron and the entire piece falls off since hydrogen gas is formed on the iron. With time, when this rust removal is complete, this entire piece will be black because when the iron actually forms hydrogen gas on it, some of it forms ferrihydrate, which is a black compound that will be sitting on your cleaned part, which is completely free from rust. Now, I haven't spiced this solution up since I wanted to keep it environmentally friendly and uh, so it will take some time until this is finished but I will see how it, this will gradually become darker and darker when the rust is dissolving and the solution will become greener and greener as the ferrous um, or the ferric ions will go into solution. In the meanwhile I will show you some well aspects of the power source that we use for this. I use the cheapest possible old style battery charger. Now if you want to do this experiment you could go to the Walmart or another superstore and you will maybe find something like this. This is a Chinese version and I made a mistake of buying it because I was tempted since it said that I could regulate the current and the voltage to quite an extent. Now it turns out that these new battery chargers, they have a circuit board that doesn't allow you to just run current as a power source. It actually senses that whether you have it connected to a battery with some charging from the beginning. So you can use it to charge a battery, but you can't use it for electrolysis. So I've now been running this for four hours and uh, you can actually see now the vice uh, imprinted in there in the froth that comes up on the surface and um, you could probably remove this froth somehow so you can see it but I'm actually going to lift it up to um, show you what it looks like after four hours so with this setup I can just take these two bars here and lift them carefully and if you're looking now down at the vise you can see that a lot of the rust has been removed but I still see some of it so I'm going to let it back down in there and continue for a little bit more But we will keep on going for a couple of more hours. So this is after five hours and I'm now going to terminate this experiment. Um, I've actually looked through the, the froth here by removing it a little bit and it seems like we're ready. Uh, you can never be sure actually how far you are um, well, progressing your reaction without taking up your part. So uh, one thing is that you take it up in, 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 in intermediate states and then you check out how well it's been removing the rust and then you put it back if, there is, if, if it's not enough. But I'm going to take it up now and I will show you uh, what it looks like when I clean it off with a regular detergent. So I've now cut the electricity here. Uh, and uh, we're going to bring out the device and we can see that most of the rust has been completely removed there's some left in here in the corner 
or maybe not. I will take it over to the sink and I will clean it up and we'll take a look at it. We can see a little bit of black here and this is what's referred to as ferry hydrate. But uh, with this uh, mild electrolysis conditions we actually get a very clean part. So the next thing is that I just clean it up with regular tap water. And in these areas here you can see there's been still a little bit rust left in there because these have been less accessible for electrolysis. So I'm gonna see if I need to do something about that but I think with a um, brush like this I can actually just brush it off. And this is how it came out and I've only used this brass brush and a regular sponge like this and some detergent and after that I sprayed it with WD-40. There's um, see, well, there's some grooves where we still have some rust there maybe. Possibly I don't know if that is rust but but uh, mostly well 99.9% .9 free from rust that I can say and also in here in the section down there you can see with, the, with just a little bit of uh, brushing I was able to get the rust off there as well so the electrolysis reaction has uh, done its job Finally, and now I'm just cleaning up this, and just one uh, little advice, if you set, make a setup like this, uh, you will find out that the best positioning for your anode, that's where you connect the red cable on your battery charger, is um, actually on an equal distance from your object. Because now when I ran the vise here, and I cleaned that one up, I can see that the field strength in your solution is higher down here, towards the handles of the vise and that makes the electrolysis go faster there than it actually does over on that side. So if I would uh, you know, modify this setup then I would run a cord down to on this side all the way down to the anode so that the anode is placed on, an, like, on the same distance from the vise during the electrolysis because then you will have an even electrolysis occurring over your entire piece. Now if you would for example hang some nails or many tools in here and run them at the same time it won't matter so much because the tools, most of the tool will be on the same distance as compared to over here. So this one will be identically the electrolysis cleaned all over its surface. As, and this one would be identical all over its surface. Whereas when you have an elongated structure like this, then you have the problem that this part will be more exposed or uh, better cleaned on this side than over on this side. So the last thing I'm up to today is that I'm going to clean off this paint here and as, since I don't use any brush tools, or mechanical things, I'm just going to burn away the paint before I electroplate this one and make it into a golden vise. So this is a very convenient, non-destructive way to strip your parts and paint if there are no plastic or wooden components in there. So now, and to see the entire electroplating of this vise. Hit subscribe and you will see in a couple of weeks when a new video is released. Thanks for listening guys.